Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Light Movement Show. Uh, so, in this episode, we are going to be talking about five amazing printing solutions for artists. Uh, so, we have everything from, you know, if you're a complete beginner, uh, mm -hmm. and all the way up until like an advanced, uh, you know, something where you have been in your art career and um, you're looking to explore new options with printing. So we're super excited about this topic because it's just, a, a, printing is an amazing way for artists to monetize their mm -hmm. art and to you know really um, get their art out there on levels that they wouldn't be able to normally just by selling original art. So every artist should be making prints if you're not making prints uh, because it really helps you scale and grow your art business. Um, so. Last week, if you missed our episode, we talked about um, how to live the artist's life with DJ Freezy J, uh, Demetrius' dad, and my father-in-law, and that was super exciting. Um, uh, maybe entertaining is the right word. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that uh, one had a. Today we're talking it went about off rice. Topic. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a good time with Freezy J in the mix. So. Um, that was a super fun episode. If you guys missed it, you can watch it on the channel after this. Um, and so, first though, I want to give you guys some news about what is going on with Milan Art. Just real quick, quick update. Uh, so, yesterday, I am so excited, we launched our new season, season two of The Outstanding Artists. Um, and you know what? I want to pull up a review real quick because uh, we had a review from someone in art club Ooh. and it was just, it was so good. It really warmed my heart hearing this. Uh, so shout out to Nadine Hamilton for this review. She said, guys, I have to say that you all just got 1 million times better with the cameras editing the whole production. So excellently put together. Not like it wasn't brilliant before, but you just really elevated everything and I can see all the hard work and passion moving into everything you all do and it's beautiful. Aww. Can't wait to watch the first challenge i love to rewatch the old series just to have people there painting with me sometimes huh? that is so cool <laughs> so super cool um and we're hearing lots of good things everyone all the contestants are so excited to finally be sharing this you know yeah. they we filmed this like a month and a half ago or two months ago yeah a month and a half ago um and it's just so fun sharing it with everyone after all the work that's been put into it. And you guys uh, have to go watch it. It's it's amazing. It's and like it really it's Netflix is, quality. Like, yeah, it's so cool. Um, and maybe we one were day, able to make it, maybe you know? one day it will be on Netflix or something like that. Yeah, it was just I'm mm -hmm. I'm so excited about it. So if you want to watch that, it's available exclusively on Milan Art Club. So you can sign up with a 14 day free trial um, on our website. You just go to Art Club on the tab, and then you can join there and start watching today. So uh, another super exciting uh, thing that's going on with Milan Art is we have a workshop coming up next weekend. It's going to be available online and in person. Uh, and mm -hmm. that workshop is Narratives and Oils, if you haven't heard that. Uh, so actually on Tuesday this week on the Milan Art Institute um, Instagram channel, we did a uh, Art Talk Tuesday and we talked about how to tell stories with your art. And so the workshop is basically sort of about that topic, but it's a little bit, uh, it, it covers beginner tips, but also it's more advanced with oil painting. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's definitely geared towards people who have some experience with oils yeah. and they wanna really tell stories with their art. Uh, so I think that's gonna be so much fun for all the current students. And um, Deirdre, why don't you tell us a little bit about the workshop a little bit more? So um, it's three days long, and actually, I don't know if you mentioned this, maybe I missed it, but um, we have people who can stay. No, I didn't. That's good. Yeah, yeah. so we, we opened up our, um, I wouldn't call it a hotel, but kind of. <laughs> well, <laughs> so basically our is. house has, you know, a lot of rooms, and so um, people can stay here while they take workshops. So I think we have four or five people staying at the house, so mm -hmm. we definitely have um, a few more rooms available. But anyways, it's it's gonna be so much fun. I'm really looking forward to it. And um, this format that we're doing where people can join online and in person is really exciting because uh, we tried this at the conference, uh, conference for the first time and it was like, it worked so well. Mm -hmm. And it just worked beautifully. And so I'm, I'm so happy that we're able to do this and have people join online and in person. And so it just makes like a bigger, you know, more fun class. Yeah, and definitely. Yeah, and I agree. The, the technique is probably, you know, more geared for people who know about oil painting. But definitely. I would say 
you know, if you've done a few oil paintings, I still think you can come and be a part of this. You don't have to be like super advanced. So mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's, it's going to be a really fun workshop and I'm excited to be the online host again. Mm -hmm. uh, so Ellie and Dewey are both teaching that. Uh, and then I'll be sort of guiding you through if you're watching online. Um, and we're going to have like seven camera angles. It's going to be a full shebang again, just yeah. like the conference. Lots of fun. Um, okay. So, oh, and then just so you guys know, um, in case you don't know, and it's your first time watching, we're going to be doing a live critique at the end of this, um, and also a Q and A. So mm -hmm. if you're watching, you have any questions, make sure to post those questions in the live chat and so that we can see them. And um, if you are watching this, it would be awesome if you just told us what current printing solutions you're using in the chat. So that way we know where you're at and you know how we can help you guys better too. Mm -hmm. So keep your questions or post them in the chat. I'll be able to scroll through the whole chat hopefully at the end uh, and we'll answer your guys' questions. So first off, I just wanted to give you guys a little overview of the five different um, printing solutions we're gonna talk about today. Uh, so we're gonna talk about local printers, uh, working with local printers. We're gonna talk about working with wholesale providers. And so that's different from drop, sh uh, drop shipping. Um, we'll go into a little bit of the details with that. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're gonna talk about cut and sew, which is sort of similar to wholesale, but a little bit more advanced and different. Um, and then DIY printing, and I don't mean like well, I mean, you, I guess it you is do, do it like, yourself. Yeah, it is DIY. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we're going to talk about drop shipping at the end and different platforms that we use, um, different tools that we use to make that happen, um, integrations and such. Yeah. Uh, and then when to sort of transition from drop shipping to the other printing solutions. Uh, so that's a little spoiler. It gives you a little hint yeah, we're on be what our opinions some, are. Some very good tips today. Honestly, yeah. this is. Dare I say one of, well, okay, it's not, um, I don't want to say the most valuable. It's like one of the most um, in-depth podcasts, live, like uh, shows. <laughs> light movement shows that we've done. So I am really excited to hear your guys' feedback, um, and I hope this is really helpful for you guys. So first, let's talk about local printers. So Dimitri, you actually just started, um, well, not just started, but you used uh, local printers before. Mm -hmm. um, you have some experience with them. I actually used to work at a print shop, like a local print shop in high so school. So you have experience. So I have experience <laughs> on the other end of it as well. Uh, and so let's, we're, yeah. gonna, we're gonna talk about the pros and cons of each of the different printing solutions. So first, local printers. What are some of the pros for local printing? Well, local printing, um, it's local, so you can go drive there and look at all their products. You can see up close, you know, before you invest, the quality of the product. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think it does feel good nowadays to support small businesses like that. And it feels good to be working with um, a small business, like, you know, collaborating. So yeah, um, having that those human interaction is yeah. nice. Yeah. And you can, a lot of times I think, you know, they give you samples and you can like, you know, really see if it's a product that you want to invest in. Um, I, I'm, I think it really depends on your printer if they, you know, they have different minimums. So maybe, you know, it's like a low number where you just have to buy 10 or maybe you have to buy a hundred. So definitely like, it really depends where you're at, and if you have the demand for it, then of course the more you buy, the better of a discount you'll get. So I feel like with local printing, there's a, there's many different ways to use it, but um, I think it kind of goes with the wholesale idea a little bit. What are some of the products that you would print on with a local printer? So um, it depends on the print shop, but <laughs> um, for example, the other day we went to one in Athens and because I'm about to uh, release some sweaters <laughs> and other clothes, but um, we went there to see you know, what kind of stuff they do and they mostly do apparel, but they also print on canvas and he was showing us all these other things they do. And he said, pretty much anything you can imagine we can do for you. So that wasn't even on their website, but we went there in person and found that out. So it was just, it was really cool mm. to see that. But there's so many products. I think it's just endless, like whatever you can imagine, I think um, you can get it done. So, yeah. you know, greeting cards, um, of course, just regular prints. Some print shops have like really glossy, high quality, like photo paper. 
um, where it kind of has like a poster look to it. Um, you could do calendars. Um, there's so many things, hats, water bottles, tote bags, like they can pretty much print on anything. Yeah, a lot. So they can do pretty much, well, most printing, I would say some limitations. Um, a lot of them don't do all over printing. Um, so that's yeah. something that's like pretty exclusive to like cut and sew or drop shipping uh, because it is a much more um they print on involved, the fabric and yeah. then create the product. So, yeah. yeah, it's a it's a very involved process. It's pretty pretty complicated. So, um, well, not super complicated, but it, it takes larger machines in order, larger printers in order to accomplish that. So, if you want to do like all over printing, definitely cut and sew, like custom, or like if you're on want to do something really high quality, and if you then you go with cut and sew, and if you you know are looking to get something out there pretty fast, a little bit lower quality, but um, low overhead than drop shipping would be the way to go. But that's a spoiler. I'm, I'm spoiling. <laughs> We're going to get to that around. later. <laughs> so, um, but some downsides to yeah. well, working. Okay, just some other things that you can do with local printers is like embroidery. If you want, I don't know if you already said this. Oh, no, I didn't um, say that. Yeah. You can do screen printing, so like t-shirts and stuff. You can do, um, you know, like Dutra said, canvas prints. Sometimes you can even do metal prints. That um, Most local printers probably wouldn't be able to do metal prints, but of course, paper prints. Um, you know, uh, but, and then the limitations are like a lot of printing on fabric, like direct to garment. No, what is it? It's not direct to garment. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's it like printing on the fabric directly and, um, like not like screen printing, but like, and then also some polyester, like printing on polyester. There's like polyester is a little bit more difficult to print on. And so it requires like like if you want to get a high quality print with it, it has to do with like the heat transferring. Um, if you want to get a higher quality printer, you might have to do uh, someone, work with someone who specializes in printing with polyester or do print on demand. Um, so I don't know, that's just a, a tip for that. Um, okay, and then some downsides to printing with local printers. Um, so it could be a little pricey. It really depends on the printer, how big they are, um, how much volume they're doing. But if it's like a tiny little print shop in like a small little town, they're not, they're probably going to be more expensive. Mm -hmm. So, um, that can be a downside. And then, you know, there's going to be a minimum order. You're going to have to do, like we were saying before, like some of them, you know, maybe it's just 10, maybe it's 20, you know, you never know. Yeah. But, you'll have to like put some money up front. And so you wanna make sure that you have the demand for it. And, um, but overall, I think this is a pretty good option for like if you're just starting out and wanna do prints, um, I think, yeah, just go for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, and also um, another downside is that you have to like do the shipping yourself. <laughs> So, uh, did you but, already say that? No. no, but that's not, you know, that's not that hard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm just it's saying just extra like, work. if you have, if you are already busy, say you have a lot of commissions, you, you really like to focus on the art, then, you know, maybe doing the shipping yourself, maybe you want to hire out uh, a cousin or a, a son, a daughter, <laughs> or, you know, nephew, niece, someone, someone, a friend's kid, I don't know, someone to do that for you. Um, you know, in order to free up some of your time. But of course there's this like point of diminishing returns. Like when you hire someone, you have to make sure that it's exactly. profitable. So yeah. um, it all kind of depends on where you're at with your art career. So, um, and then another like good thing, I don't know if we said this before, another good thing about working with local printers though, is that you, you get to like really have a lot of, like there's a lot of quality control, like with drop shipping. I mean, of course, you can order samples and stuff yourself, but um, sometimes you don't get to look at every single product before you ship it out there. Exactly. And so with like local printing, you know everything that the customer is going to get is the highest quality. So that's good. Yeah. And the next, you know, the next thing we're talking about is wholesale printing. Yeah. And that's the second option. And that's yeah. pretty much... It goes hand in hand with yeah. local printers. So, um, and we're talking about this because we're walking it out right now, mm -hmm. and it's it's very exciting uh, what we have going on. But with wholesale providers, um, I think you know buying stuff in bulk, you are 
you get to really dream and like design these products yourself. And it's pretty much whatever you can imagine you can do. Yeah, and yeah, so there's the, so much out there that you can do. Yeah, just as like an overview of wholesale or what we mean by wholesale providers is like what you can, there's different platforms out there that have access to giant catalogs, almost like when you go and you look for like print on demand stuff with like Printify or any of the other print on demand companies. The um, wholesale companies, though, the difference between those and the print on demand is that the wholesale companies typically are higher quality. They have higher quality products just in general. Um, and with them, there's like a lot, what you would do is you would buy a product from the wholesale provider, you know, you have to do a minimum order. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you would take that to a local printer or, you know, if you have the printing capabilities yourself, then you would print on it yourself. So there's, it's a little bit more of an involved process. But before we get into the drawbacks, let's talk about the positives. And so, actually, first, could you just share the uh, company that you yes, found? Yes, I am so excited about this. So I, I think, you know, it was just a God thing. I don't know how I found this place. I didn't even know something like this existed, but I'm so glad I found it. Um, it's called FAIR. So it's F-A-I-R-E. And basically, you sign up, you have an account, and you have access to thousands of wholesale, um, you know, small businesses. And they mostly specialize in like apparel, but they also have, you know, lots of different household things. I haven't even like, I've barely tapped the surface of it and I'm specifically looking for clothes right now. So that's, you know, what I've been looking at. But so basically every shop on that website has um, a minimum order and most of them are like 100 to $200. So that's not much at yeah, all. Yeah, it's not much. And so, Okay, I'm just going to share what I've been doing because I feel like it's a pretty good example. So originally I was thinking I'm going to do drop shipping. I'm going to go to, you know, Printful or Printify, find a place like that and just, you know, use their hoodies, their sweaters and kind of create a design and just print on demand. That sounded like the easiest option. But I just did not like any of their products. I didn't like the feeling of the sweaters, I don't like the way they look, they're not super stylish, and so I've, and they were $30 to print. It's like Walmart clothes, basically. Yeah. So like it was you're, like, you're basically it, getting Walmart clothes, you know, if when you do And there's print like on three brands to choose from, they're all super generic, and anyways, I was just like feeling really disappointed that I can't really create the product I have in my mind. And so, somehow, I found that website, it unlocked this whole world, and so I found, um, I actually bought the sweaters and they're like super soft, cozy material, really stylish. It has like kind of a V-neck off the shoulder feeling. It's flowy. Um, it's something that you would go to a boutique and buy. It's or like, like free people. Yeah, like. <laughs> it's like really high quality. And it was, they were $15 each. And so then, so I bought a bunch of those. And then I went to a print shop and the guy told me it would cost between $10 and $12 for this specific design I'm doing where it's embroidery and and printing so it's kind of a more detailed process mm -hmm. and he was saying that like he was acting like that's pricey and I was thinking well that's really not pricey <laughs> compared to just going on printful and you know spending thirty dollars and then you have to pay for shipping on top of that mm -hmm. and I have to mark it up at least double to make money yeah. that's it's like ridiculous to pay eighty dollars for a cheap Walmart sweater so I thought yeah what I'm doing is so much higher quality and it's actually cheaper. And so, yeah, I'm so excited about this project. And I'm thinking like, even if you are a beginner and you know, it's, it's really not that much to invest up front. It depends on the product you're doing. Mm -hmm. But I feel like with going down this route with wholesale and designing these things yourself and really being choosy about those products, you can, um, stay more true to yourself and your brand and, you know, put something out there that's high quality. So it is, it's getting hard these days to find print on demand places that have the high quality products. Yeah. And also with working with like wholesale and anything that you're doing yourself, you have that sort of creative control exactly. over your vision. The, yeah. yeah. Over the entire customer experience so you get to decide what it's like when they open it like if you want to have an insert in there if you want to have you know ribbon or if you want to have a uh, string or if you want to do like even so a tag with your name on it exactly like, yeah. yeah you can create tags and you you have a lot more like it's a lot more 
personalized mm -hmm. and a lot more you. So, you know, it's definitely something to, I think, invest some time into. Uh, it, it, it is more involved, you know, it takes a little bit more time. Uh, and, you know, it's, let's, let's talk about some of the drawback though. So there's, <laughs> there's a bigger upfront investment with yeah. it. Uh, and, you know, like Dimitri said though, some, some of them are really small. It just depends on the wholesale provider that you're working with or that you find. Like some of them, like Dimitri said, are only $100 and then there are some that were $300. And then, um, and also you have to think like, what is the oh. quantity that you're getting? Also, yeah, I want to talk about another, you know, that's just one website with mostly clothes. So that's a great place to start. But I'm, you know, there's so many other options. Like when I got my book made, that was a huge upfront investment. Mm -hmm. And um, I realized, like, you have to calculate how much of these products do you need to sell in order to make your money back and then start making money. So um, you just have to be confident that you're going to sell that quantity. So with my books, I invested 13000 into buying 1,000 books. And I've sold... Which is a lot. It's like, a lot I of mean, money. That's like but in the first month of releasing them, I made all that money back. Mm -hmm. So... And I'm, and then ever since then, you know, I've been making money on the books. So it's, and with those books, I was able to design every single aspect of it exactly how I wanted down to having gold with my name on the cover and with a print on demand place, you know, there's places you can print on demand certain books and you just don't have that creative freedom. Like yeah. you can't really design it how you want it. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then another downside, I guess, with you know, buying wholesale is getting samples because a lot of places they want to guarantee that you're going to get, you know, their minimum. Oh quantity. yeah, definitely. Yeah. So you have to, in order to get a sample, you have to basically agree that you're going to, you know, end up buying from them. And, you know, you experience that with your shirts that you're mm -hmm. working on. I'm spoiling it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Jake's designing some really cool men's shirts and, uh, why don't you talk about that? Well, that's sort of more like kind of cut and sew. Uh, but it's a bit. also you're buying wholesale. But it's also and, wholesale, and, yeah. So yeah. a lot of these have overlap. Like, you know, local printing has overlap with wholesale. Sometimes wholesale has overlap with cut and sew and DIY. You know, it's all it kind of all intertwined. It, it's just printing. It's just the subject of printing. We're just trying to um, give you guys lots of ideas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We want you to leave this feeling like, oh my gosh, the inlet. There are endless possibilities, and I can do anything with my art. And I can totally make a career out of selling my art. So, because it is possible, anyone can do it, and it's actually pretty easy nowadays. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, with the shirts that Dimitri's talking about, I am trying to, not trying to, but I'm designing some shirts that are like sort of like this, like collared shirts. Um, and uh, I wanted to do something more custom, like all over printing. And so it's much more involved with that. Um, and so, but not like all over. I tried all over printing with uh, print Printify, I Printify, think. Yeah. And the yeah. shirts, it's just, it's not good quality. And it costs like $30 a shirt. And so it's like, oh my gosh, like this is more than, this is like how much most people pay for like when they go to a store. Well, maybe not. I mean, it depends on what store but, you're going and the, to. The but the quality, it's just not the same quality. Yeah, and the quality is like super cheap polyester like there's like high quality polyester and then there's like super cheap and this is like the super cheap polyester and so I was like I wouldn't wear this and I don't want to sell something that I wouldn't wear that's so. a good indicator like if you would be happy to wear the things that you're making mm -hmm. then okay or you can use sell it. you know yeah. or like if yeah. it's like a mug like would like, you wow. is it like the right finish is it the right like does does it, the handle feel good in your hand when you're holding it like i have examples here i forgot about oh, should we start yeah. sharing them <laughs> yeah yeah so okay um well these are sort of print on demand but let this me go is back to wholesale. this so yeah this is back to wholesale and local printing combined. this we bought t-shirts we got some nice high quality cotton t-shirts mm -hmm. and this is from the MAI art store yeah. so this is kind of branded for that but so we bought these nice cotton t-shirts and then we went to a local printer um, in Arizona and got these printed so um, we the, have like several different designs and, and the it's cotton very is high so quality. it's so yeah. soft like I really like to wear the shirts and you can also cut them and make crop tops yeah <laughs> that's what that's, I do. <laughs> you can do all sorts of cool stuff you could do like tie-dye with you know and yeah. then take a tie-dye shirt to local printer you know and there are wholesale 
tie-dye shirts that you can buy, you know, if you don't want to do the tie-dye yourself. Because um, that's kind of an, no, it's not super involved. Well, I don't know. I mean, anyways, um, so where were we? I was talking about all over printing on the shirts I want to do. So <laughs> there is, the Getting thing about samples. that is yeah. like, if you work with um, a company that does like, like the company that I, I, I found a few of them and a lot of them want you to make a deposit or they have uh, a setup fee or they have um, like basically just an upfront payment before you even get anything from them. And so you have to like do your due diligence, you have to research, you have to look at the reviews, you have to, you know, see if other people are happy with their, you know, products. Um, if you can, of course, you always want to get samples first. Um, but the thing is with some of these, like they actually have designers and you know, people who will help you with making the design the whole, like the whole way through the process, but it's just more expensive. So, um, it's, that's one of the drawbacks to working with like a cut and sew or, you know, one of those, like, I just thought of another thing. Okay. What is it? <laughs> another drawback. You gotta, if you're going to buy wholesale, you need like a storage room <laughs> oh, and that's yeah. something yeah. that we've run into mm -hmm. but like you you definitely need a place to store all these products and so that is definitely a downside mm -hmm. um, and so you need like an organized space where you can you know package things efficiently um, have all your products out but yeah it is hard to have a bunch of stuff just you know in a closet yeah and then another thing with wholesale and it sort of you know goes with local printing, anything where you are investing something up front is a downside is you have to know that you're going to sell everything that you're buying mm -hmm. or at least sell enough to make your money back. Exactly. And you sort of touched on yeah. that with your books. Yeah. You know, you made this huge investment of $13,000 up front, you know, just sort of out of faith. And then you sold, you know, enough to make all your money back with the books. So, um, which is awesome. So, you know, that just, is something it goes into the planning you know you want to have like a really solid launch plan and everything yeah to be strategic. Um, and a marketing plan mm -hmm. and so it just it's it's a little bit it can be scarier but it's also at the same time much more exciting because yeah. it's like an extension of yourself rather than just a template that somebody else has created mm -hmm. but that being said i don't want to like put down you know, drop shipping because it definitely has its place and, you know, we still use it. So we're going we'll to talk into about that, that later. at the end. So we have two more. Um, yeah. Okay. So we talked about cut and sew already. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that. So moving on to point number three, cut and sew. Um, so we have the least experience with this. As Demetra said, you know, we like, I'm doing some research into it. I've been doing some research into it. Um, and, you know, we know some people, we have a coach who's, you know, she's a, expert in this actually yeah. Um, yeah and her name's heather bailey uh hopefully i don't know if she's watching or not but <laughs> she is like a famous fabric designer so if you haven't checked out heather go check her out her art's amazing her fabrics are awesome uh and so anyways though um <laughs> uh, cut and sew is definitely the most complex i think out of all the different printing options um and it could just be because i know the least about it but from what I understand, it is like the most involved process. So typically you have to have like a really, um, it, it's more involved with the, the design because you, you know, you have to make sure the seams line up. You have to um, really think of it like three dimensionally, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the like products how, that you're how designing. How the image will wrap around, mm -hmm. you know, your body. And it's, I think it, it, I've tried to go down that road. It's, it is hard. Yeah. You got to be good at like making patterns, lining things up. Um, it's, it's definitely mathematical and I just... <laughs> I mean, you could just hire someone to help you do that, like come up with a design for you. So that's another route. Um, but it's still, it still goes with uh, like buying things in bulk in wholesale and um, you have to, it's definitely going to cost more because you're starting with the fabric, you're providing that fabric. So it's going to be overall like probably the most expensive. Well, way. yeah, I mean, it just depends Unless also on the quantity. Unless you use different countries and... Mm -hmm. Like if you source from like India, the fabric, and then, you know, you have like if it just depends on like with cut and sew, you you 
from what I understand, you're starting from scratch. <laughs> you're starting from scratch completely, yeah. and so there's more steps involved. It's more complicated. Um, I don't want to try to like teach you guys cut and sew, honestly, just because I don't know it. So I like I'm just giving you guys it as an option so that you can go and do research on your own and learn more about it um, because. It's one of those things, like the benefit to it is sort of like what we've been talking about with wholesale and, um, you know, like local printing is you have the ultimate um, creative freedom with it. You have the most creative freedom out of any any of the options, basically, if, with apparel, of course. This is like cut and sews, specifically re referring to apparel. Um, and it's just, you can make the most unique products with cut and sew. Mm -hmm. Like you can make something completely out of the box that you know nobody would really um, be able to replicate like easily. So <laughs> that's the cool thing about it. So moving on to DIY printing. So do it yourself printing is something that it, I feel like we have like a love-hate relationship with it. Yeah. <laughs> like I love, I love printing um, because it's so cool having like it's satisfying. Yeah, like, it's satisfying. Seeing your prints come out, cutting them yourself, packaging. Like you're with your printer like every step of the way. You really fully understand the whole process. And sorry, I cut you off. No, no, no. It's fine. Go ahead. Yeah, I think. Um, it's definitely a big investment up front, but in the long term, like you will save so much money by having a printer. And I just mean for um, the printer we have just prints on paper and canvas, right? That's the only. Well, you, yeah, you can print on a lot of things. I mean, well, the there's a we wide have. spectrum yeah. between um, paper and canvas. Like, you know, like poster paper, you can do like photo watercolor paper, paper, watercolor paper, like straight up canvas. Um, and we have pearlescent I, I, canvas. Honestly, there's, I mean, there's like so some things, things we haven't even explored fully with the printer yet like because satin is that one of them? Or? Uh, satin is like a finish. Mm, okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there was like satin material. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there, we might even be able to print on some fabrics with it. So I don't know. We have to like, like, fully explore that. Um, but the thing, the the hate part of the relationship is the waste and the learning curve. So there's definitely a learning curve with printing yourself. Um, and just so, so you many know, settings, so, <laughs> so many, many little settings. settings. If you do one little thing Adjustments wrong. Adjustments and <laughs> yeah, it's, um, there's a lot of things. You can appreciate like people at print shops. Like it, it's a lot of, um, a lot goes into it. It's a, it's a very detailed job. You mm -hmm. have to like pay attention to every single detail along the way. Otherwise you could completely screw up the entire print. Um, but for those of you who are wondering, the printer that we have is the Epson SureColor P8000. So they have a, a model that's slightly better. It's the P9000, um, and the difference is that- it Has one more color. It right? has two more colors oh. that you can print on. Mm -hmm. And so most printers are like CMYK, which is just the color gamut that they use, and that's cyan, uh, yellow, magenta, and then black. Um, and then they use the white of the canvas as the white for the the print um, and so which is interesting when you start to print on like pearlescent things or any sort of colored object if the white isn't the they white they actually have then, gold canvas you can print yeah on. so I that's mean, pretty cool um, pretty honestly yeah. it's something that we want to explore into but making canvases yourself with prints it's, time it's difficult but I want to give you guys a cool secret if you do feel like making canvas prints yourself and when, so before that though, the, the time when you would want to make canvases yourself is if you're doing limited edition canvas prints. I would say the printer that we have, it's perfect for any limited edition series. Yeah. Like that's kind of why, I mean, initially I got it because I thought I'm just going to completely switch over from drop shipping. I'm just only going to make prints myself, but it's a lot of work mm -hmm. and very time consuming. And, um, Anyways, I kind of doing half and half. So I use it just for limited edition um, or really big projects. Like we kind of print, we use it for random stuff. But um, anyways, yeah, print, it's good for limited editions. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Or like, yeah, anything hand embellished. Um, so anytime when you have to directly sign the print, because if you think about it, like you can get canvas prints or paper prints from drop shipping company or a local printer or I mean a local printer I would honestly say is probably better than doing a drop shipping company if you're doing canvas or paper prints 
um, depending on the wholesale prices that they have. Um, but gosh, where was I? I just, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, I'm just going to tell you guys, the yeah, canvas. canvas. So yeah. if you do want to make your own canvas prints, then we found this company based out of Canada that's called GoFrame. Um, and so they make a super easy, well, super easy, a, a pretty easy it's way pretty easy. for you to stretch your own canvas. And it's you can do it pretty fast. I think we timed ourselves and it's like five minutes yeah, per five canvas. Minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not too bad. You know, it's, it doesn't take Once that much time. Once you understand the process of it. Once you get a flow, they have two different options. Um, and honestly, we haven't bought from them in a while um, just because we started doing canvas prints, you know, from uh, uh, Printful. But anyways, um, they have two options. They have the standard and then they have the pro. The standard is like a little bit thinner. It's a cheaper option. Um, I would go with the pro though, just because I think the way that they do it is they have like these like glue strips that are on the um, that are like on the canvas frames, the canvas frames, just on the frames. And you stretch the you have like these four corner pieces, you put the wood down and then you stretch the canvas around it. And um, it's super easy. It's Honestly, kind of hard to I, explain. I wouldn't. But yeah, I'm not. I'm going to do a bad job of explaining it. They have a YouTube video shows you how to do it in like five minutes. Super easy. Um, mm -hmm. But. They're pretty cheap. I think the cost, from what I remember, is if you did like a, I can't remember exactly, but a 16 by 20 was like 18 to $25. It was in that price range per frame. Um, so then if you factor in a cost of like around 10. Not per frame, but per set, you know. No, no, per actual frame, like $18 per one pieces of wood no not each individual piece of wood but like for the whole like yeah, yeah, the whole for the thing. whole frame like yeah. this whole part right here would be like 18 dollars. so minus the canvas itself um and so you know then i'm going into details but uh <laughs> so then you know if you factor in like five to eight dollars for printing on the canvas itself the total cost is between like 25 to 30 three dollars so and then shipping kind of, is like it's basically 20. the same price as a print-on-demand place is what that's we're what i'm at. getting at yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um that's why we would say for diy printing the best solution is to do it like only for limited edition like that's like i after a lot of experience we did a lot of open edition prints with the the printer you know it, it's a pretty time consuming, you know, unless you have a team working with you. Like if you had a team, honestly, I would say like if we had a team, I would say we should do all the prints that we can do ourselves ourselves because then you have control over packaging. Mm -hmm. But um, and, you know, the packaging, it's all about creating a user experience. You know, you want to have or collector experience. <laughs> <laughs> um, you want to have uh, the best experience, something that's going to make people want to buy from you again. Um, so that's basically it for DIY. Just to summarize, it saves you a little bit of money over time, especially a good amount of money if you're doing um, paper prints. Paper prints, but also if you're doing limited edition. Um, you know, it has a personal touch. It helps you understand the printing process. There's more packaging freedom and quality control. Um, and then the downsides are it's quite a bit of work. There is a huge learning curve. Uh, I wouldn't say huge. There's a big learning curve. Do all your research online before you make the mistakes in person, if you can. Uh, um, and then there's a high initial cost up front. The printer's like four or $5,000. And then the ink, like each ink cartridge is $250 but you for only each have color. To Oops. Replace the ink, you know, like once or twice a year. Yeah, so, so it lasts quite a long time. Yeah. Um, there's the like waste things where you have to replace those. And then, of course, there's the media that you're printing on. So, uh, I don't want to discourage you though because it's pretty cool and it's, it's a lot of fun. fun. Yeah, it's fun. You know, um, but another downside is expect to waste a little bit of money along the way. Don't feel so bad if you do, you'll make it back. I um, can't even <laughs> tell you how many prints. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, there's like settings where we did something wrong and it will just print half the painting and then just cut it off. I still don't know off. what that is. Like, it just stops at halfway, and I, that was yeah. just crazy. Yeah, and but. couldn't figure it out for the longest time. But it's working now, so it's all good. <laughs> um, okay, we're gonna move on to the last point, which is drop shipping. Um, so 
Drop shipping, just as a quick summary, it is really good for anyone who's just starting out. Um, it's super fast, it's super easy. No they have, risk, yeah, very low risk. Yeah, yeah. basically no risk whatsoever. Um, it's really easy, super manageable. Um, there's a lot of really good integrations. Exactly. It makes shipping website, really easy, mm -hmm. especially if you use a platform like Shopify. It's like so easy to keep track of all of your They're orders designed, and everything. Shopify designed it so that you can just integrate with any drop yeah. shipping company. That's I think it's, you know, just the future of where people are going. But, um, of course, having the hand-made, hand-touch things will never, never be diminished. Like, that will always be more valuable, in my opinion. Yeah. But, you know, just have a balance of both. So, I'll just bring out these. So, these, this is a canvas print um, that I use with, you gotta hold it up higher, with Printful. And I've tried a lot of print-on-demand companies, and I feel like Printful has the best quality in just the prints. So I don't know about their other products, like, you know, all their, you know, like mugs or clothes and stuff. I'm oh, not here, impressed I... with that. But for framed prints and canvas prints, I just use them. And I've tried a lot of companies and it's just like, if you look, this is like real wood and this is very tight canvas and this is super thick canvas. So so for yeah, a comparison, this. here is something from um, Printify. And it's not bad. Um, they don't even tell you that it comes with this hard back. Yeah, so it comes with a hard back, which, I mean, it could be a benefit or a drawback. I don't know. Dimitri doesn't really like it. I don't like really it. like it because I it hides. I kind of like it, but it, it does hide what's underneath, which is a little sketchy. So yeah. the, the actual canvas itself isn't as high quality as, like, the it's canvas. It's much thinner. It's a lot thinner, yeah. And then the edges right here, I don't know if you can see, but... The edges are not quite like they have these like little frays on the edges. So it's just, I would go with Printful. Yeah. And then another product that Printful does um, are these framed prints and they have like plexiglass and I think it's very you gotta, affordable. They can't see it Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, you know, this is really good quality and they're very cute and um, yeah. So I, I'm really happy with Printful on these specific products. I haven't really used them. I don't use them for anything else. And if you were to try to make this yourself, I, it would take so take much forever. time to like get a like to do this Where whole process. Where would you even find these frames? Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that go into the process of making this. And so, like when using a print-on-demand company, like, 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 like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying not to say like, guys. Um, <laughs> when using a print-on-demand company, you can overcome a lot of uh, barriers to entry mm -hmm. with more complicated products. Like, uh, for example, both of the canvas prints and the um, Frame. framed prints. It takes a lot more to make it. It's, you know, it just, it would be difficult to make that yourself. So it's, it's, I think it's the best route to go with that or with a print on demand company for those types of products specifically. Yeah, another, you know, really good thing about using print on demand is that you <clears throat> once you get paid, there's no upfront cost. Like you just you buy the products and you you've already been paid for it by your customer. So, it's so it's so easy. Oh, and another benefit is international shipping. Yeah, a lot of these companies now have places, you know, around the world where they can ship not just in the U.S., but they ship from uh, Europe, Australia. So Printful does have multiple locations. So I get much better shipping rates, and it's just overall, it's it's really worth it, more than worth it. Yeah, so. like if if you were trying to ship to Australia, for example, from the U.S., that is, um, it's just, it's like forty, fifty dollars using DHL, right? If you were to ship a canvas print. Um, it almost, yeah, 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 yeah. And if you were to... No, sometimes it's like almost 70 or 80, yeah. yeah. And if you were to use Printful to ship a canvas print, it's like, what, $20? Honestly, I can't tell you on the top of my head. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of, it's around that. It's just but. way less. And the companies like Shopify or, you know, if you use some sort of print manager or, I mean, I mean shipping manager like ShipStation or I don't know what is another one easy print or easy ship I mean um, then though they a lot of them have 
discounts for shipping rates. So it's, it's much cheaper if you use, and even if you're, so actually this is another tip, is even if you are you know, using something local, if you're making the prints yourself, create the shipping labels with your platforms because it's gonna save you a lot of money rather than you going there in person and trying to ship there. Um, so, at, so what you mean is like, like, like don't go to the post office and then pay for it there. Exactly. Make your exactly. labels at Sorry, home. that was yeah. unclear. <laughs> use a third party. I used to use ShipStation and you get pretty good discounts with them, but it's it's so clunky. Like everything, <laughs> the whole website is just like it's clunky. It just, it's, <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't feel that um, intuitive, and I, it's the not that hard. The user experience, guys, yeah. it's all about it the user sucks. experience. So with Shopify, I mean, you can print the labels right from Shopify. They're just so smart. They have everything integrated with them. So I don't even need a place like ShipStation. Yeah. So I just go on Shopify, buy the label, print it right there, and I have a nice, um, what do you call it, thermal printer. So it just prints out the labels on stickers, and it just makes it go by so much faster and easier and uh we wanted to say a quick thank you to our sponsor shopify for this uh, no i'm <laughs> just kidding i don't want to get us in trouble <laughs> shopify did not sponsor this i'm totally joking um <laughs> but uh no we we really like shopify it's it's pretty awesome yeah shopify if you want to sponsor this let us know uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh we would be good partners i think um okay so anyways some other benefits for drop shipping let's see i already said all of that <laughs> okay downsides now let's get into the downsides why wouldn't you want to do drop shipping do you so kind of like how you mentioned before you're limited on how you're gonna create your product so if you have something really cool in your mind and you want to do something really creative it's just it's very hard with these companies because they have templates and you just have to plug in your artwork and use that template. Yeah. So for simple um, things like canvas prints, paper prints, frame prints, that's just your art on display. So that's I think drop shipping is a great option for that. But when it comes to apparel or like mugs, for example, OK, I don't want to make my dad feel bad but i mean this is a cool mug it's cool i mean i would i would use this but is it the best that it could be he could take this to a whole other level you know yeah like it's just it's, it's just, just not very square, it doesn't have know? that custom feeling and we even tried doing like transparent where like he literally has his okay i'm sorry john if you're watching this you might be watching this right now <laughs> but he has the canvas or i mean not the canvas the easel on printed on the mug well i mean there's there's little yeah Okay, anyways, well, that's anyways, maybe that's not necessarily basically printful or it's, printified. It, there's a square. Fault, there's only this little thing that you can that's print what on. That's we're getting at. So you don't have like the freedom. Like if you wanted to do an all-over print, you can imagine do that. printing on the inside too. Like yeah. that would be super cool. So and, you're very limited with um, products like that, where it's just a really simple template. So, and when artists do that, it's just like, oh, they use Printify. Oh, they just did that. So yeah. it's like. It's not as unique, and I'm just getting so many ideas now for mugs because I saw <laughs> on the, the company that I was sharing earlier on FAIR, they sell a lot of home products, like even these really cool candles, and like I'm wondering, like I could go somewhere, get something engraved on it, or um, even maybe print a design or something. Yeah, that would be super and cool, then, or like gold embossing or yeah, something. Yeah, you can yeah. sell some really cool products just by going out and designing it yourself. So, so that's that, the downside. Yeah, so that was it basically. That's all we have on printing for the most part. Um, <clears throat> you know, you wanna um, figure out where you're at in your art career, what works best for you, you know, and feel like experiment. Don't, don't feel you as if you are limited because you're just starting out that you can't go out and do something that's cut and sew or um, do something that's a little bit more advanced. You know, whatever it, whatever you put your mind to with printing, you'll be able to accomplish it. And if you really wanna sell all of those products that you're gonna create, you're gonna sell them. You just have to stick to it and find your market. And you know, there's a whole, that's a whole nother topic though. It's like marketing and selling products. Um, Creating so, products for a certain market. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So. That's a whole nother topic. We won't get into that today, but um, I hope that this was really helpful. Last thing I want to talk about is just when would you switch from drop shipping to other options? Uh, 
I think would when, you? I mean, would you switch? Like, like would you ever stop doing that? This like canvas prints. Um. Open edition. Is there a time? I don't know. I mean, honestly, I don't know right now. Like right now, it's the best option, and it's so it's just like hassle free. Like I don't have to do much at all. It's it's. I don't even have to do shipping. It's just very easy. So I'm very comfortable doing that. But um, but packaging. Thinking about the future. Yeah, if I were like, yeah, thinking long term, I think it would be cool to have probably by that time there'll be better ways, like more efficient ways to create canvas prints. Maybe there'll be something even better than GoFrame um, and more cost effective. And if we had like a team of people that we trained and they just, you know, like, if I had like, more of a demand, like a bigger demand on, on these products, then I would probably, probably have a team. So I think it goes back to the quantity you're selling mm -hmm. and, um, just when does it make sense for you to start? Like when does it make sense for you to start? I think, yeah, when you have a big demand, like okay. a really big demand. And I don't even know how many, maybe like for me, it would be like if I sold 60 to 100 prints a month, mm -hmm. I would say that's a pretty huge demand. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's definitely a good number. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, one more thing that I want to talk about is just sort of looking towards the future. And print-on-demand is only getting bigger. It's not going to get smaller. It's going to just keep yeah, growing I think and it's, growing. It's going to be the future and there's yeah. gonna be more options I, oh that's another thing I wanted to talk about is like some out-of-the-box print-on-demand companies ones that you don't typically hear about um, the two biggest players in the game are printful and printify typically when you like, research print-on-demand that is all that you will see you have to really dig deeper to find these smaller ones mm -hmm. that have more unique things but yeah, so one of the smaller ones that we found um, a while ago that we used, it's a little bit more expensive. The quality is in the middle, I would say. It's like... Pretty good. I'd say it's better than Printful or Printify in really? terms of... Well, I don't know. It just depends. I'm talking about art of wear. Mm -hmm. um, so they have some good quality stuff. They have like silk scarves and stuff, which is... That's cool. Um, this is just for apparel, not yeah, for anything else. Yeah, and this else. is just for apparel. Um, so art of wear, I think it's... It's not, like, you would think that it's art of W-E-A-R, like art of wear, but it's more, it's art of wear as in W-H-E-R-E. -E. So artofwear.com, if you want to check out that, that's a drop shipping company, print on demand company. Not, also, I, uh, I recently found Bonfire, which is really cool. They have, they seem to have very high quality shirts and I ordered some samples yesterday, but they're going to take 20 days to get here. So that sucks. Mm -hmm. They take a long time to fulfill things, but... I just realized that this section should be print on demand and not drop shipping. It goes together. <laughs> it goes together. Yeah, it's Print it's on okay. demand is they print and ship for you. So mm -hmm. it's yeah. the same thing. It's kind of, but uh, drop shipping companies use print on demand. But it, anyways, um, so you said bonfire. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, what, what are That's the... That's just for t-shirts. Okay, just mm -hmm. for t-shirts. Um, and then you just found another one. What was it? The one pixels. Oh well, pixels. That's another good one. They have metal prints on there. Acrylic prints. They have prints, acrylic prints. Wood. They have some cool prints on there. Mm -hmm. um, I would check it out. Uh, and that's just pixels, like p i x e l s dot com. Pixels dot com. Uh, they integrate with Shopify. Um, their websites, their user experience is not good. They got a clunky website, but <laughs> <laughs> clunky and junky. But uh, they they work with. Fine Art America, or yeah. Fine Art America owns them. I don't know. I think they're partners. It's one way or the other. Either yeah. Fine Art America owns Pixels, or Pixels owns Fine Art America. Um, either way, they work together, um, and Pixels is it's pretty good. They have good quality stuff um, for for like wall prints. I would say, um, in terms of like mugs and stuff, it's probably it's around the same quality for like all other objects as Printify or Printful. And then you said you said you just found one recently that you're like super excited about. What kind of company? About. What do you remember? It was, was a clothes? Was it? Oh, I can't remember. Oh, okay. It's on my phone. I have a few that I've been saving, and Gelato is one. Hmm. 
and then um oh gosh i'm sorry my notes are very messy <laughs> Um, well, in the meantime, I am going to pull up some of your guys' questions. Actually, first, let's do the critique. Um, <clears throat> While Demetrius is trying to find this last company. Spod. Um, Spod, that's right. Okay. Yeah, so, so there's Spod and how Gelato. Do you, how do you spell Spod? S-P-O-D. Oh, S-P-O-D, okay. Like S-Pod. S-Pod. <laughs> you can go to spod.com to get... <laughs> Um, and so, I, you know, if you want to check out drop shipping company or print on demand companies, those are some cool ones. Um, they have some better quality products than you might find on Printify and Printful. But, you know, as Printify and Printful get bigger and they're only going to get bigger, um, they probably will have better quality products. And my guess is that in the future, they're going to have custom packaging as well. So as soon as they do that, I think that print on demand, it's gonna become a really good option for you. Um, it already is, but it's just gonna get better and better. So We have some very good questions. It's super weird to look at your face while you're talking in a yeah. delay. <laughs> okay, but first, let's do the art critique. Oh, so that's right, okay. Cue the critique. <laughs> on the screen and it's good okay cool so up here we have the three artists of the week and of course as always if you want to get your art critiqued post it on art club post it uh using the hashtag art breakthrough 2021 on instagram mm -hmm. tag us it'll help us see it better um or more and <laughs> yeah so here are the three paintings of the week Super excited. These so, are all beautiful. Yeah, they are. So yeah. first we have Mona Lisa, uh, Mona Lisa Steiger art. And I was reading um, Mona's caption that she put, and she said she was afraid to do abstracts because uh, she felt like she's always had this pressure that painting realistic is like more respected than just an abstract. But she said this is a breakthrough piece for her. She had so much fun painting it. And I think it's beautiful. I think it's done as is. Like, you know, it could be done. It's, it's great. Um, so all of our suggestions are just little things, you know, to make these better. But I yeah, think sign it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's a joke. It? It's, really, it's okay. really good. That, was, that wasn't like a, a dig for not signing it. That was me saying it's done and it's perfect. But <laughs> anyways. Um, what you okay, let me see. I really love the color scheme. I love how it's limited palette, it has this kind of moody feeling. Um, I think on the left side where you see those kind of decorative leaves, um, maybe we did it like with stencils. spray paint. Yeah. yeah, I think that maybe you could add like another layer of paint. I totally um, agree. Kind of molding, like kind of change their shape a little or turn them into something. Um, maybe they can dissipate more into the background because it does look a little bit like, oh, it's a stencil. Yeah, exactly. So, but kind of towards the bottom right where you have this kind of dark spot with these purpley veins, um, maybe use a, a stencil, but maybe not. It has like all these layers and your personal touch to it. So I think it maybe just that one spot could use some more of that. That's fantastic. I totally agree with all that. Okay, good job. <laughs> and then, okay. So Iris Vinaldal. This is Vinaldal. another gorgeous abstract. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that you chose some abstracts to critique. Yeah. Um, the color scheme is very just uplifting, joyful. Mm -hmm. um, it has a good presence about it. I really like the yellow. And yellow is a very hard color to pull off in a painting. So I think you did a really good job using yellow. Um, maybe, let's see. I would say maybe your edges, like create some more, um, like some more sharp edges that feel like it's all, that it, that it's like close to you. Like, like there's not too there many There could be things. something in the foreground that yeah, kind of exactly. stands out above the rest. It kind of feels like it's all on one level. So I think creating more, um, like levels of depth would be beneficial what i yeah i totally agree maybe this there's like a red um kind of a red stripe going down vertically underneath On that yellow polka dot i think if that was brought forward like with some really bright warm red 
that could be a great focal point and um i mean this painting could be done it could be done as is but this is just some advice to make it even better mm -hmm. um i think you did a really good job yeah me too maybe you could add a little bit more neutrals maybe more neutrals well maybe like some a little bit of grays I, I could know. see that. It, it could be good. Like, you don't need to add that, but. All right. And last but definitely not least is Clara Weeby Art. I'm so sorry if I'm saying your last name wrong. Um, but Weeby sounds cool, too. So <laughs> <laughs> um, This is an awesome painting. It's yeah. really well done. I love the pinkish uh, feeling like, yeah, to it. Yeah, warm undertone. Like, it mm -hmm. feels so warm. Yeah. Very romantic feels like a beautiful garden Very on the outside dreamy. of a super cool It makes us feel like, oh, uh, like you want to be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely is inviting. It has a very inviting feeling. I think, I just think there's a few spots that could have like one more level of refinement, like refinement and a little bit thicker of paint. Mm -hmm. So maybe in the foreground with those roses, kind of mm -hmm. like lead us in with some really thicker, um, uh, just more like maybe juicy colors in the foreground, kind of where your hand is in the painting, and then it will lead us through um, towards the statue. And then I want to see like more light coming through the trees. I think that would be really cool, like just having some sunlight. And then our eyes would go all the way around the painting. Mm -hmm. uh, well, they, she has some light coming through the trees yeah, on the right just side. just like making it stronger. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, and just adding on to the refinement aspect of it, I would, um, on the stone path on the front on like in the front area i would refine that a little bit more too just because it feels sort of almost like underpainting right there in the front um on the bottom bottom left uh and then you could leave the as the path kind of goes along just leave it less finished i think towards the end of it so that way it like Dimitri said it has that same sort of effect where it kind of guides your eyes around the painting and it feels it makes you want to like travel with it because mm -hmm. it's a little bit less refined back there and more refined in the foreground so um and other than that though i think maybe some brighter highlights um and just some areas maybe on the top of the marble statue or dome i don't know if you call that a dome but <laughs> um or just highlights with the the sun that's coming through um through the, the trees. And then I think maybe the trees, the leaves and the trees could be a tiny bit more refined as well. Um, but the feeling of the piece is really good. It's a it's a really sellable piece, I think. It's oh, yeah, definitely something sellable. that people would want to live with. And you could sell it just how it is. Like, someone would definitely buy that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So, really good job, Clara. Um, congratulations, all of you guys. You guys did an awesome job with your paintings. And we're so glad that you guys shared them. Um, so now let's move on to Q and A. So I'm going to go over to here to the chat and start to read some of your guys' questions. So some very good questions. Ooh, how do you print for circle canvas paintings? Oh, that's such a good idea. We've never done that, that before. That is hard. Hmm. I don't know. I think you would have to probably, I mean, honestly, I would just spend a lot of time Googling it, just Maybe. doing research. Yeah. Yeah. I, I haven't personally seen any print on demand companies, but I think the best route for that would probably be to go with a local printer. Uh, mm -hmm. because they probably most likely will have the, the knowledge and the skills to do that. Um, and a lot of times they have circle frames already too, mm -hmm. so you could get a cool frame to go with it too. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, that's good advice. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, it and is. Who, <laughs> who knows? Like maybe there are, there's know. like a weird little... A niche, yeah. Honestly, that would be that really smart. specializes in circle or oval Let's shaped. start that business. <laughs> If they can make the round canvas, they can make round prints. Um, red bubble. Valentin uh, Costa's art oh. is asking about red bubble. So I've never heard of that. What I is have, that? and I, I mean, I don't know about it too much. Like, I've looked at it a while ago, and I think it's, from what I remember, I think it's similar to, like, Society of Six, hmm. but you can 
tell me if I'm wrong, but it's like a place where they promote your stuff, but they take a fee. Mm. So you don't really make that much money. Um, I don't know. I think, I think it's like a personal thing. Like I, I wouldn't want to do it, but if other, if you, if there's like a good demand on that website and you feel like you're going to get a really good reach, um, then just go for it. Like try it out. But yeah, it doesn't hurt to, you know, throw mud on the wall and see if it sticks. (laughs) I think, you know, with society of six though, specifically because I've, I've gotten products from them. Um, I don't know if gotten is a word, but (laughs) <laughs> got anyways you either get get or you get got <laughs> so i've i've bought products from them and they're not the highest quality like i i don't really like society of six too mm. much yeah um okay so athena divine super cool name by the way is wondering what kind of printer do you use so i mentioned this earlier i don't know if you missed it or you might have asked before i said it but it just as a reminder it's the epson sure color p8000 um and so you can actually print up to 44 inches about like four feet just less than four feet um on one side so you could do 44 up to whatever length your media is that you put in there Um, and you use like roll roll canvas roll paper you can also print on sheets but that's a lot harder because you have to feed it in um, like one sheet at a time I'm sure there's a better way to do it than that but there's probably like some sort of extension or tray that you could get for it but it's a giant printer so it takes up a lot of space Um, and it's around four five thousand dollars so Kylie Lewis is asking, how do you get your canvas print to wrap around the edges? Does that take from the painting itself or is it a blurred continuation? Oh, uh, of the painting just wrapped around the edges. So for, for this print, um, it is just a mirrored image of, um, it's, it's kind of time, time consuming on uh, Printful. You have to basically add uh, five I- layers of images. So I just, you know, add the main image in the middle and then drag like just part of it for the sides. And so you have to do that all the way around. It takes a lot of time. Um, or Jake in the past has helped like create some files on Photoshop where he just mirrors. Um, yeah, you just mirror it yeah. and then it, you just upload that file straight into Printful. It takes time either way. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. But I think, I think it looks better than just having plain white. Or that's solid the color. only option. Like if you were just to put your, uh, your painting on there and not do anything to the sides, it's gonna come out white and it, it will just get dirty. It just doesn't look that nice. Yeah, it just, opinion. it looks more professional. It's, it feels like a continuation of the, the piece. You know, and if, and if you, are, this is just an advice for paintings in general. If you're painting on a canvas, you want to paint the sides before you before you sell it or after you sell it before you ship it, um, really, because it just it feels so much better and it adds that level of quality to your painting that you want to have. Okay. Okay. Earth Impress TV just said that, or Earth Impress. Uh, TV just said she shipped a small three inch by 12 inch tube. Oh my gosh, to Canada for $214. Wait, to OZ? Where is that? To OZ from Canada. Oh. Where's OZ? I don't know what country that is. I don't know. It'll be good to but know. That is crazy. That's very expensive. So, Shakaya, you need to get one oh, of Oh, that's Shakaya. Okay. Yeah, cool. you need to get one of these. Um, these plug-in companies like ShipStation, or if you are using Shopify, I don't know what platform you're using, but you can use these third-party places where you you do pay a monthly fee, but it's so worth it because you'll get DHL. You'll get much better prices. Use DHL. <laughs> if you're shipping internationally, use DHL. Yeah, I've <laughs> used all the options there are, and DHL is the best. Yeah, it's very reliable. Yeah. It's gets there you know, fast. Gets there super fast, like and so surprisingly cheaper. fast. Okay, so we got a couple more questions. Oh, Australia. Okay. Oh, I didn't know Oz. that. Oh, I didn't Oz. Know. Okay. Like Aussies? Oh, yeah. interesting. I didn't. <laughs> That's a cute way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, repeat where got her canvas prints. So Dimitri gets her canvas prints from Printful. 
Mm -hmm. That's the way to go for camera sprints that we found. Um, did have you gotten prints from Pixels? I've no, but I've just because their back end is so difficult. Yeah. I haven't figured it out yet, but I haven't spent too much. That's on time my list. <laughs> on there, because um, I would really love to have metal prints. I think that would be so cool. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> you're welcome. Okay. Let's see. Any other questions, anyone? Are there any questions on Instagram? Okay, cool. We'll answer some questions on Instagram. Um, and then in the meantime, you want to use a high quality DSLR camera, 20 megapixels or higher. Um, so Andrea is right. Definitely if you want to print on um, Andre or Andrea, I don't know which one it is. I think it's Andrea. But... Oh yeah, Andrea, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, if you're printing, especially a large print, you want to use a high quality camera. Um, but Dimitri's phone, we've used my phone, Dimitri's phone, you know, we have like the newer iPhones um, and they the actually work very good prints. for, yeah, and yeah. I use I use uh, Pixelmator Pro and actually Lightroom has this Okay, this is too. a huge tip, what he's about to tell you guys. So it's if you have an image and especially if you're printing with, um, uh, it, there's, it's, it's a kind of a complicated thing, but it's not that complicated at the same time. If you're printing using a print on demand company and you have an image that looks really like it's really clear, it's not blurry at all. And then you can put it into Pixelmator Pro and in Pixelmator Pro, you go to, uh, tools. I think, I think it's tools. I'm not hundred percent sure. It's one of the tabs up at the top, but there's this thing that's called ML super resolution. And what that ML stands for is machine learning. So it uses like a AI algorithm to basically look at the pixels and to upscale the quality of the image that you have. So it will take whatever image you have and basically make it twice the size. And so of course it's not magically making it uh, more clear, but what it does is it uses like machine learning to say like, okay, these pixels, need are, are supposed to be it's it's really complicated i don't want to go i'm sure if you google machine learning uh super resolution from pixelmator pro it'll give you better information than i'm going to give you <laughs> but it's a super useful tool that you can use and lightroom actually has something really similar that they just came out with it's been kind of glitchy for me so i haven't i've just been using pixelmator pro but and then if you want to take that and you put it in photoshop Photoshop somehow has a magical algorithm with their uh, image processing where it makes the image smaller. So that's another pro tip. Machine learning, super resolution, and Pixelmator Pro, take that, put it in Photoshop, get the image smaller. But, then you can use it anywhere. But why would you want your image smaller? Because sometimes when you use the um, like ML super resolution, it makes it like 100 120 meg, uh, megabytes oh, and with you, like print on demand you companies quality, you can but only lower. have it be oh. like 50 megabytes and so you take it you get and you want to wow. you know have the maximum quality yeah it's it's trial and error wow. uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you take it and you put it in photoshop and then you get it to the maximum size that you can get it to without it uh, or with it being 50 megabytes maximum amount of pixels okay if you want clarification on that um you can rewatch the video after. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take some questions, yeah, questions from, from Instagram. Instagram. If I sell a painting, can I still use it for prints, or do I have to ask the person who bought it for permission? Oh, that's no. That's a great yes, question. Yes, that's a good question. So <laughs> her question, if you didn't hear it, was if she sells her painting, can she still make prints, or does she need to ask permission from the person who bought it? You, as the artist, have all the rights to your original. So Always. you can do whatever you want. Um, where it feels a little funny sometimes is with commissions, but from my experience, people who like- It just feels not, funny, but you still have the rights though. Yeah, exactly. Like, and people who um, who own, let's say you do a commission piece, but it's, it just turned out so amazing and it, it's really your style and your voice and it feels like, you know, one of your portfolio pieces um, because sometimes commissions don't feel that way. Mm -hmm. But anyways, uh, just that person owns that original and they feel so good about it and like if you make prints it actually makes their original worth more and they feel like it's even more special for them because they have the original and um i don't know i think i think it's don't feel bad about it at all it's uh you know just a way to monetize your art so mm -hmm. um yeah that's that's a great point and if 
somebody, okay, another point on that subject is that if somebody feels like they have the rights to make prints of your art after you buy it, that is completely wrong. They no. do not have the rights to make print. If they buy your original, you retain all the rights, unless with a you commission a piece or yeah. some sort of deal that you made, you you know forfeited your rights to them or they bought the and rights And that would be a art. licensing that's, deal. Yeah, that that's sort can... of a licensing, yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Most of the questions on here were answered already. Okay, okay. cool. There's one more. Oh, live stream or art show. Oh, man. Oh, guys, oh, yes, I would I love to. Oh, yes, I another girl ask you. It's just, that is like a lot of, so. Wait, you could do it for like 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> I could do it with your phone. Yeah, but if my we phone. wanted to do it something like this, that no, would no, be Jake, like, we can't do that. Don't worry. You can just <laughs> use my phone. Yeah, I mean, I with could. stabilize I could go live a little bit, but guys, I want to be part of the show too. Like, <laughs> I want to be there, not like part of it, but I want to like, be with her <laughs> um so i'll you, do it for part of the show i'll yeah, go live for yeah like let's do it maybe let's 20 it. minutes 30 minutes um but and i'll be documented i'll have a camera with me so um but but yeah so if some of you don't know next week thursday i'll be in charleston um with both of us and um i'm doing a show at the grand bohemian gallery and it's like a hotel gallery so it's really beautiful i love the space it's a super cool part of the town so um yeah i would love for you guys to be there it's from four to eight and there's going to be drinks and i think maybe some snacks mm -hmm. so <laughs> it's gonna be a ton of fun it's gonna be a and ball. i have a few signed books there too which i don't do signed books anymore so oh yeah mm -hmm. that's super cool Okay, well, this went way over time. <laughs> we went like 20 minutes over, so. Um. But thank you guys for joining and watching, <laughs> and um, these are always so much fun to do. Yeah, thank you guys so much. And if you like this video, you know, you know what to do. Like, subscribe. And honestly, it would be so cool if you guys sent this to an artist that you know. So go down to the share button below the video, share this with someone who you know uh, who could benefit from you know, all these different tips that we gave out in this video. And um, you know, I'm sure they'll thank you later and we thank you in advance. So, <laughs> and thank you guys again for coming. We do this every single Saturday at 12 p.m. EST, except for next Saturday because we're having a live workshop. Can't be two places at once. <laughs> um, but, and uh, now that I think about it, Saturday after that, we're not doing it. What's the Saturday after? Oh, actually, your mom could do it. Yeah. Anyways, we'll talk about that later. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for joining. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, and let give us any suggestions on Instagram, on Facebook, um, on the comments in this or in the live chat for different video topics. Any mm -hmm. topic you'd like to, us to cover, we love your guys' suggestions. Uh, and so we actually, this came from somebody, I think in the last one or in the last episode or mm -hmm. the episode before that asked us about printing. Um, so thank you for your suggestion. I don't, I don't have your name, so I can't give you credit. I'm sorry. But um, hope you guys enjoyed this, and we'll see you guys next week. Not next week. The week after that. <laughs> <laughs>